So a lot of people may have questions and stuff out there on what we can do as Americans, as people, as a community to be prepared and just on the chance of something like this happening, what is taking place with the whole thing over in Ukraine. So today I'm gonna to cover the top three things that we can do to avoid the current situations that are taking place in that ungodly war that is going on in Ukraine. Join me in being prepared for what we can do for you and for your families. So let's get going on this video. First off, the number one thing that we can do to be prepared for the current situation that is taking place and we're watching millions of people exit a country and they are just grabbing things and going. The number one thing that you can do is having a plan. Using a planner and having a plan. This way here you can write down what your emergency plan will be and what it is that you need to accomplish in a short period of time to save you time because time could be of the essence of what we are seeing that has taken place. The proof is in the pudding, folks. If you've watched any news footage or anything else, these people did not really have really good plans on how to execute them to ensure their family's safety and to get out of harm's way in an a adequate amount of time that they were given. It all started and then everybody started rushing away. Next is, number two is, where are you going to go? You have to have that in your plan of what you're going to do. Where are you going to go? It all depends on where the situation is taking place. So having something written down in your plan is crucial. You have to have multiple plans. It's like you are planning the battlefield, if you really think about it. Do you go north? Do you need to go south? Do you need to go east? Do you need to go west? All that needs to be written down so you know how to execute the plan. And you're not thinking about the plan when the crisis is happening. Having this is a crucial point and a crucial part of having your plan and being prepared. Now the next question is you have to ask yourself is how are you going to get there? Are you going to be taking your car? Are you going to be trying to get on a bus? Are you going to try to get on a train? Are you going to try to get on a plane? How are you going to exit your situation? Are you going to be walking? What is the plan? For most people, you're going to try to get into your vehicles and try to exit as fast as possible. And in which case, if that's the case, you want to make sure that you do have paper maps. A road maps, you can get small ones. This is the large print, okay? This thing is huge. It's the whole United States of America. List all the roads from your major highways, folks, to your secondary roads, to your dirt roads, to your class four roads, and all those to help you get out of harm's way because most people will be taking the most standard way, the, the highways. So those are all gonna be jam-packed, remember that. Those are all going to be jam-packed, so you're gonna to wanna to sit back and have alternate routes. And for fourth on this particular subject on having a plan is how to stay safe. How to stay safe 
is totally up to you. You want to make good, solid decisions, and you want to make sure that you are paying attention to your surroundings. Don't try going totally out of the way somewhere, and if you don't have a, enough supplies, enough food, enough gas to get you through those types of areas, you could take some back roads and everything else, but if there's no gas stations, no places to resupply, that is not going to be a very safe situation. Not to mention, there's not a lot of help that could be out there. If, say, your cell phone service is down, you can't make calls, you can't get a hold of anybody, you want to make sure that you are trying to do your best to choose the safest routes and the safest plan for you and your family. Next, we want to really sit back and think. You don't want to panic. Panic is just a calling for disaster. So don't panic. Try to keep a calm head no matter what the situation is. This way here, it will help you in the long run. Because if you start to panic, that's when all these bad decisions and stuff can be made. So you want to try to make sure that you're staying calm and doing your best not to panic. It can also affect the other people in your family or group if you are the one that is trying to make decisions on the group or your family. If you are showing panic, the panic will generate down through the group or your family. Number two, controlling your situation. Controlling your situation is such a huge thing, folks, because you have control over the situation. You have control over what is going to happen. You have control on where you're going to go, how you're going to get there, how you're going to feed people. You have control over everything. Your decisions are going to be based on the control that you feel that you have. So controlling your situations is going to be a very vital part of succeeding in your goal of getting to a safe place. Number three, you have to be able to adapt to changing conditions. And what I mean by that is, if you're traveling down the road and all of a sudden you notice or you get word over a radio or something that there's a massive roadblock or a massive backup of traffic and stuff, that's adapting to the changing conditions. You want to try to get off of the interstates and get onto the secondary and the back roads and everything else to try to avoid those types of things. That's adapting to changing conditions. You can also see if things around you all of a sudden aren't looking too good. There's a lot of things going on and you don't feel safe in those areas. You want to get out of that situation as fast as possible. That is adapting to the changing conditions that are going on around you. You have to keep your eyes and ears open and make sure you are paying attention to everything that is going around you at all times. Number four, in this list here is making good decisions. Making good decisions is critical during a type of crisis, an emergency, no matter what it is, from war, hurricanes, evacuations, fires, earthquakes, tornadoes, blizzards, ice storms. Making good decisions in an emergency type situation is going to help you control your situation. It'll also help you not to panic and it'll make you more aware of the adapting changing conditions that are going on around you. So making those critical decisions 
Sometimes you have to stop and think for one minute and always go with your gut feeling. And this way here, you and your family or maybe even the group you're traveling with can arrive at the safe place that you are trying to get to. And finally, probably one of the most important parts of this is if we haven't all noticed, with what has taken place over in Ukraine, you see all these people, they're just grabbing things and they're just taking and, you know, they're carrying all this stuff, you know. They have no controlled concept of what they are doing. You're panicking, you're grabbing everything, and you're just trying to get out of the bad situation. One great way to do this is having a backpack. Having a go bag, a backpack, is a critical, critical part of avoiding this whole current situation that is taking place. This is what we have learned by witnessing what we are seeing on TV of the millions of people that have fled. Now, what size backpack, you ask? It all depends on your build. It all depends on what you can carry. It also depends on your health. You see, some people may not be able to carry a backpack. They may have bad shoulders or a bad back. But in that situation, you could always get a carry bag and carry that with you something that has a zipper on the top it would be nice if maybe it was even waterproof to keep your things that you have inside dry but it has to be something that you're willing to carry because like a lot of people over there yes a lot of people crammed onto the trains as we saw a lot of people drove to get away from everything but a lot of people walked for days on end to try to get out of the country carrying whatever they could carry. So having a backpack or a bag or something that you can put your supplies and things in to get you out of the situation would be crucial and a critical point in your thinking of how am I going to avoid this situation and I need to get out. Now, how do you choose the contents that you're going to be putting in your backpack or your bag? This is a very, very critical situation, and this is a very important step. Number one, your contents should start off with the first thing. And you all think I'm going to say food, and I'm not. I'm going to say first aid. You have to start off and get a first aid kit or first aid products or whatever you want to put it into that bag. How much space you have in the bag. You want to make sure that there are first aid that goes in first. Second, you want to get in food. Now, you don't want to carry canned food with you if you can avoid it because canned food weighs a lot of weight. So that's going to add a lot of weight to your pack and take away from things that you may want to make sure that you have that I'm going to cover here in just a second. So having your freeze-dried meals like your Mountain House, like the individual servings that you can buy at Walmart and on Amazon, having those, as long as you have a way to cook what you should have in your backpack, at least a way to start a fire, and something to at least boil water with, you could have meals for days on end, depending on how many of those you want to bring. So you have to have your emergency kit, you have to have your freeze-dried foods, all right, your individual servings. You also want to make sure that you have some way to start a fire. If you're not very good at starting fires with all the different techniques and stuff out there, so make sure that you do have matches, lighters, 
you have some type of a kindling. You could even do cotton balls with Vaseline on them. Cheap, inexpensive, and you could store them in one of your old medicine bottles like I've shown you in some of my videos. Very easy to do. Everybody could do it. But having some way to make fire and boil water so that you could pour the hot water into your pouch and you have food. Not to mention you can also sterilize your water. Any type of product would do. A soy or mini, a life straw, those things are very lightweight, come in real handy. I would go with the soy or mini because that will filter out over 100,000 gallons and probably weighs less than a few ounces. Next you want to make sure in that backpack that you do have some type of a sleep system. A tarp. You could do a hammock. If you did have small kids, you can get a two-person small tent that does attach to the outside of backpacks. Just a little thought out there, folks. Some way to get shelter out of the weather. You want to have a change of clothes, especially socks and those type of things because if your feet get wet, maybe you can try to dry your shoes, your boots, or whatever else by a fire and if you have dry socks that you can put on while the other ones are drying, that is a critical point also. You have to take care of your feet, folks. If you are walking, that could be a very bad situation if you start to have problems with your feet. A raincoat would probably be also helpful. You can buy the U.S. Army ponchos that would cover your whole backpack, you and everything else, and keep you dry and keep your gear dry. There's a lot of things that you can put into your backpack. And I've done several videos on those backpacks. You can go back and watch some of my videos on backpacks and everything else to give you a multiple ideas on what to put in there. And last, who should have a backpack? And who should carry a backpack? Well, if you really think about it, folks, all kids that go to school nowadays carry backpacks. So there is no reason that during an emergency type situation, they can't help to share the load. You see, this way here, you can pack more critical survival items if everybody is sharing the weight. So I believe that everyone in the family should have a backpack and everyone in the family should be carrying something. They should be carrying either food. They maybe they somebody could carry some extra water to get you going before you could find a stream or something where you could filter out more water and fill up your bottles or whatever it is, your canteens that you do have. Everybody at this point in time should be helping out in this type of a situation. So in closing, folks, the three things to avoid the current situation in the war that's going on in Ukraine that we can learn from of their devastating ordeal that they're going through, but it should be an eye-opener for all of us, is the fact that we need to be prepared. You need to have a plan. You need to stay calm, cool, and collected. And you also need to have a backpack that is packed and ready to go on a moment's notice. You need to know where you're going. You need to know how you're getting there. And you need to stay safe. So I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Thank you for joining me on this video today. I hope this helps everybody out. I hope this gives everybody a reason to be prepared and a reason to make sure that if something like this ever happened here, you know how to react. You have a plan. So until next time, I'll catch you all on the flip side.